Hello everyone and welcome to the 63rd community demo. Please increase your uh, quality of your video for better experience and to ask questions you can ask them in the YouTube chat or you can ask us in IRC. A few updates from my side. The first one would be that Foman uh, is about two weeks away from being a 10 year old project and I'm very grateful to the community for organizing a birthday event. Uh, so if you're around in Nuremberg, please do drop by and say a hi or visit us and uh, come to the birthday event. The second update would be that uh, there will be a do you know tweet series that I will be starting from next week on Twitter. So uh, if you haven't followed the Foman project on Twitter, uh, I think probably it's the right time to do so. Uh, read more about these topics in the upcoming newsletter. Uh, enough of me talking and let's see what we have in agenda today. So today uh, we have Foman containers for fun uh, by Ohad. We have Navi uh, Navbar redesign by uh, Ron. Then we have changes to content host registration by Jonathan. And in the end, we have task notifications and troubleshooting links by Ivan. So let's start with Foman container containers fun by Ohad. So over to you, Ohad. All right, thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. All right. So first of all, it's exciting to be here again. It's been a while, probably a couple of years uh, since I attended one of these demos. So I'm happy to be here. And I'm also very excited for the 10-year-old birthday. Uh, I'll definitely be there uh, to celebrate. All right. So uh, the topic I wanted to share today uh, is around uh, containers support for Foreman itself. So not so much not to be confused with the foreman docker plugin we used to have where foreman would manage containers this is the other way around where foreman is running inside uh, a container so a little bit uh, I'll, I'll start a little bit with the history and it's kind of surprising that the first request for this kind this feature to be able to run foreman inside the containers was actually in 2013. So that's a fairly long time since we actually got this discussion going. Um, and over the years, people have uh, created all kinds of solutions. Some are maintained and some are not maintained at all. Uh, where I put some links here if you guys want to look at the slides later on. Some of these projects are uh, maybe four years old since last commit or things like that. But the general trend is that people keep kept on asking and I, I personally always was wanted to get to the point where Foreman could run in some degree uh, in a container. Now, over the years, and I hope I didn't get the wrong, the dates wrong, Eric, Eric Helms did a lot of work um, to get Foreman running in containers and his ultimate goal, and there's a few of RFCs, his ultimate goal was actually running it in Kubernetes and in OpenShift. And uh, he did a lot of work, um, but, and, and that, you know, a, a great, uh, great stepping stone or leveraging his experience. Uh, but I had a different motivation a little bit um, in mind when, when I started the containers feature. Um, and you can read more about it in the in the discourse. But generally, my ulti my main starting point was that I wanted to use uh, basically the ability to take a form and source code and immediately convert it into uh, a, a container. So uh, that's basically a quick summary of what we have today. Uh, now, after this has been merged, I guess about a month, maybe two ago, uh, is really the ability to have a production quality. Con I'm, I'm, sorry to, uh, I'm, sorry yeah. to, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Ahad. Uh, I think uh, your screen is not being shared. Uh, can you just wait for a minute? I'll share again. OK, does it work? Just one second. OK. I can try sharing differently if it doesn't work. Uh, I'm not sure why it is not showing your screen and it's showing mine. But... Uh, OK. You have to click on the. On the on my icon on the yeah I top. did I did that but not sure why it is not showing us okay so uh, 
Can anyone confirm whether uh, we see it? I guess. Uh, it I, can say confirm, I can for, confirm from like our list, but I guess the issue is if the okay, issue so let's, if the people wait, on the uh, see it. Yeah, let's wait a couple of seconds to see if uh, we have anyone uh, confirming on uh, IRC. It's not fun if it doesn't if it goes all you know live demos. Okay. Um, still seeing the presentation slides. Uh, maybe you can stop sharing, just in case. Over. So today's uh, demo is pretty interesting, <laughs> I think, so far. Um, I guess uh, those watching it YouTube will enjoy this uh, moment of silence. If we knew when it gets fixed, we could just advise the people that they can just jump to next minutes yeah. forward. <laughs> yeah, probably we can skip the first uh, few minutes. Okay, so confirmation from IRC that we can start. Um, I'll start again, uh, just in case. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, take two. Uh, all right, so today's discussion is around uh, the ability to run uh, foreign inside a container, um, not to be confused with the foreign Docker plugin that used to be able to run uh, containers through Foreman. So uh, just a little bit of history. Uh, what, what are we talking about? And it kind of surprised me when I looked it up that the first request to use Foreman in, in, inside a container was in 2013. And over the years, we've seen uh, a lot of people ask for it. Usually, we've not a great answer. Like, there's no official support for it. And also, a lot of... Um, uh, maintained and not so maintained projects that had a working form and environment using containers. Uh, there's also been a lot of good work, so this is kudos to Eric on his, his uh, preparation and setting up uh, a lot of different containers and uh, pretty much taking the 
full blown uh, Foreman plus Catello plus many plugins into a working shape um, based on the current installer or based on the current RPM based deployments uh, of Foreman uh, with the aim of one day running it in Kubernetes and running it uh, in, in OpenShift as well. Uh, but uh, I guess a couple of months ago or so, uh, we've merged uh, the ability to have a, uh, the ability to build a directly from source uh, a container image, um, and that was added uh, to core uh, the ability to connect to build the form and container image. I'll share the slides later on, so you could click on the links if you want, if you're interested in the details, of course. Um, so, what technically do we have now? We have um, continuous build, basically, of a production quality container images. That means uh, by production, I mean that they are compiled and served just like you would have, uh, you know, the installer-based uh, deployment. So, you know, you have all the uh, in translations in place, and we have all of the um, uh, JavaScript uh, minified and compiled, and a lot closer to what you would expect to see in a real environment versus a development environment. Uh, we also have. Uh, Quay IO as a, as a tool. So basically, every time a code gets merged into the core repo, Quay automatically goes and, and build. I'll just click on it so you guys can see it. Um, I forgot to close my IRC client. Um, we have a Quay slash Foreman Foreman. And you could see basically that uh, every time we merge something into core, um, an, an image is automatically being built and available. Uh, if you, in, I don't know if we're interested in the details, but basically it goes through all of the processes of building it and uh, eventually of making it available to, to use. Uh, today we only maintain uh, the develop tag, which is the latest equivalent, meaning it's whatever we have in, um, in the develop branch, but uh, maybe in the future we'll also be including uh, stable branches, uh, so we have a more uh, stable releases available also as containers. Okay, um, another nice thing about what we have today is the ability to build your own customized image. Uh, customized image could be, uh, for example, for code that is not yet committed. Uh, so if it's a pull request or if you uh, basically have a, your own different set of plugins con combinations that you want to test uh, or just use on a day-to-day. -day. Uh, and in here you have a link to all of the details of how to build your own image, how to use it, and how to build your own image. Um, another nice thing that I personally do uh, when I leverage my Quay environment, I've set up uh, uh, Quay to automatically build uh, every time I push a branch to GitHub. So technically, every time I do a Git push, um, Quay automatically build uh, an image for me, and then it's available for everyone to use. Or even it's for my own testing sometimes, very useful. All right. Um, what What's the aim of using it, at least in the first stage? Um, and I'll demo some of these use cases. Uh, the first thing is really to, to make it easy um, to get a production foreman nightly or stable versions at some point uh, very, very quickly. So from a user consuming it or a developer just trying to get, play with it or whatever the use case is, um, it should be something within a, a minute or so until you can actually get it and running and playing with it um, in a, you know, getting to the UI and able to do things with the application. It's not necessarily feature complete, so you can actually do provisioning end to end and, you know, complicated use cases that form and support, but it does give you the ability to try it out, play with it, and so on. Uh, this also makes it very simple, I hope, for people who want just to check, for example, the state of translation uh, and they want to change, for example, again. Uh, for to see how strings are, whether strings are extracted, or whatever things that are, you know, for documentation, updating screenshots, or whatever it is, make it fairly simple to uh, anyone to get a really environment, a, a real environment working quickly. Uh, for that, we have the Docker Compose uh, environment, which is uh, 
uh, I'll show in a minute. And hopefully in the future, it can be used for other things, such as uh, maybe you know, enabling it for running end-to-end -end testing after it's, uh, the containers are built. Or I know personally, I use it inside of uh, a Kubernetes environment. Uh, so I actually uh, open source my uh, Kubernetes infrastructure. Um, and uh, you know, if people are looking into playing with Kubernetes, that's also a way to do it. All right, so uh, enough talking. Uh, let's move on to a, a demo. Uh, so I'll change to my terminal. I hope you guys can see it uh, in a second. Uh, all right, so the, the first thing, um, nothing really changes, but the first thing you would notice that we have a Docker file in the repo. Uh, so here, it is basically all the instructions of how the, the, the image get built. Uh, the other file we have is a Docker Compose YAML file, which defines the containers we want to use when we're running Foreman. So again, not so much, in, not so many, I won't go into details, but basically these are simple YAML files that define all of the um, dependencies between uh, the, the various containers that we use in order to run Foreman as a whole. So we have a database, we have uh, Foreman itself, we have Redis as a caching backend, and we have uh, Dynflow as a worker. So if we look at for Foreman Compose, first of all, I'll start with Docker Compose pool. That will start triggering, uh, fetching the latest version of the, the containers that are currently available uh, in, uh, in Quay or depending database and Redis might come from a different source. Um, this just allows me to fetch really, really the current, current latest and greatest um, uh, images that were probably built like an hour ago or so uh, on Quay. Uh, to start Sorry, our proposal, uh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I see on the IRC that uh, they can see your terminal. They see only a uh, black screen. You can't see my terminal. Oh, okay, today's full of surprises. Uh, we can see it from here, but yeah. I got probably some something. I can see does it too. It, is it is it does it work now? Does it work now? Uh, if anyone can confirm. I'll stop sharing and start sharing again. Okay, another try. You guys here can see it? We can. You can. Oh, okay. We need to add this edit this YouTube later on and cut the <laughs> the parts that don't work. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, from IRC, the, it's the same answer. No change, just black screen. OK. Yeah, um, I also have it open here and like on the YouTube stream, and I see just the black screen, a bit uh, anonymous. 